Come and have your way, Lord, and let your name alone be glorified now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. This is the question I want to ask you. And I think that question has been already been answered when we prayed. God be glorified. Which, listen to, which is the greatest commandment? This is tricky. Mind you, I didn't say like the, the man, which is the great commandment? I said, which is the greatest commandment? Love God with yourself, but love God with your mind and your heart. Thank, Thank you very much, my friend. No, uh, no, that's, I want us to not, remember we started, we said the, the spiritual oh. mystery, the mystery. God has given us to understand the mystery. But in a Gambia language. I didn't ask that question. For us to answer the same thing he wrote <laughs> down there. But definitely come back the same thing he wrote. But I gave out the answer already by saying, we even touch on that when we pray. Mm -hmm. What is the greatest commandment. commandment? I mean, for you, for you, for us, okay? For us in this place, with the spiritual understanding he wants us, the level he wants us to understand, the level, the heavenly level, the spiritual level, not the fleshly level, and so on. What is the greatest commandment? Everything God has commanded. You know, my trying to be a, a lawyer as well as an accountant. That's not the way. At the same time, everything God has commanded. <laughs> I want, I want, I, I, okay, the greatest let me, commandment. The what? The greatest commandment is to love one another as thyself. Yeah, Pastor Martin, I understand. Remember I said, I didn't ask that question to ask anyone to repeat what God has already said there. But whatever the answer will also reflect the spiritual truth of what God wants us to understand as a mystery. The greatest commandment is sin no more. Sin. Huh? Go and sin no more. Depart from sin. I think, thank you very much, Pastor Charles and Pastor Godwin. The greatest commandment, my people, for us, okay, spiritually, I'm talking about when you talk about child, when God has come and said, Oh, stop worrying about all the things you are doing. I'm trying to tell you one thing, my children sin is sin. It doesn't matter how small or whatever it is. So, in other words, what God is telling us, I want everybody to understand all sins are equal. To the extent, listen to me, please, before anybody will challenge you and say, what do you mean by all sins are equal? All sins are equal to the extent they all lead us, they lead whoever sins to what? To death. My people, if you shoot, if you shoot many arrows to, to, to kill one bird, if one of the, one of it is, that's it, is dead. So that's what I want us to understand. The greatest commandment of God is obedience. Mm -hmm. And is that greater? Now, look at what Christ said and you will try to understand. How do we how do we perfect the fear of God? Departing from evil. It's departing from evil, Pastor I think God bless you. Is it not obedience? Yes. yes. My people, that is why and then, how do we love God? By obeying Him. God bless you. But, but can, can you tell me how I love, I can say I, I love other people as God loves me? To bring them to the place where they will also love God and obey God. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, 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 go ahead of me. How do I say, how do I come and say, you know one thing? I love Pastor Charles as God loves me. That is sincerely in me that I love him as God loves me. How do I demonstrate that? Putting is it not true obedience? Yes. yes. Is it not true obedience, obedience? to yes. God? That's what it is. I'm obeying the voice of God. God said, don't lie to him. Mm. Don't hurt him. I'm obeying the commandment of God. No wonder if you see 1 Corinthians, let's 
So to go my first Corinthians 7 19. The Bible can never go wrong. It's there speaking to us every second and every moment. First Corinthians 7 19. Yes, ma'am. Christian is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. Mm -hmm. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Is what matters. That's why God told us, look, look at these people. There are some people who make sacrifices of fools. Mm -hmm. They think, okay, they can shout, I love God. Oh, whatever. And they think, you know, there is this poor, poor person. Let me give him this. It's okay. All those things are okay, my poor. But if you don't have love, if you don't have God, the actual love is God. The only way you're going to get that actual love is to depart from evil, being one with God, and that is obedience. So everything God has, everything, every intimate relationship with God is all about obedience. That is why Jesus Christ said that the world may even know I love my Father. John 8, 14, 31, please, man. John 8, 14. No, John, John, John 8, 14. Sorry, I said John 14, 31. Okay. John 14, verse 31. Yes, ma'am. But that the world may know that I love the Father. Mm -hmm. And as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. All mm -hmm. right, let us go from here. That is it, my sister. So let us make sure... Please, why am I saying this? We're not going to dwell, dwell on that that much because we'll be dealing with obedience. But thank God, obedience is what God has been teaching Columbia right now. And it's going deeper and deeper. So you have a situation where this is the greatest commandment. Why are we saying this? That's why God is saying sin is sin, period. It doesn't make a difference. Any sin, any sin means disobedience. And disobedience is what? No, no. Sin is disobedience. It's, it's sin. It's sin. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Brother Ephraim. Disobedience is sin, and sin is disobedience. However, you want to turn it, turn it around. Let them go ahead and try to bring any idea they want to bring. It goes back to the same way that sin is sin. Now, let us look at the lessons that God has been teaching us in this place. Why? Why is he? What, the, what is the urgency that God is pointing to us? Letting us know, look, my children, time has come. With all that you thought you knew before, you didn't know anything. That's what God was telling me. Number one, realize one thing. You are guilty. The make us remember. You may think that, oh, I do all this. But that's one small thing. That is sinful. It is sinful before my eyes. It's not going to work. Because this is one thing I want us to know. There is only one thing. What is the only one thing that distinguishes us or separates us apart from unbelievers? Our obedience that leads to our fruits. God bless you, Pastor Charles. Our obedience. You see, you see where you see, you see where the scripture is telling us one thing. If you go to First John three, and we're going to move on to the lessons. To go my letter, yeah, to go my let's start from six. We don't have to go start from six. First John three from verse six. Yes, ma'am. Whoever abides in Him does not sin. Mm -hmm. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, mm. for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. 
In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Yeah. Nor is he who does not love his brother. I don't know how yes, this old James, what is showing us here, what is sin is sin. But then the question we come before, we, we talk about the lessons we can learn from there. About three of them. Is this. Why the urgency? Why is God talking to us this way? Why is God telling us now? And for, us, for some time, we've been there, listening to the word of God, learning the word of God, but suddenly it is sinking in. It's, it's just going inside, way inside to tell us, look, and make us remember, wake up, sin is sin. Don't give me any excuse and tell me this is this or whatever anybody else says. It doesn't make a difference to me. My own judgment. Why the urgency? Because we're not sure of the next minute. Because we're not sure about the next minute. But what is the fear? What is the worry about not sure about the next minute? As I feel. You are right. I'll help you that one. Because the fear there is this. This is God. And this is the mercy. Even when Pastor was praying. When the worship leader was also worshiping, when I feel Pastor Ifi was also praying, I don't know. That's why I'm saying this tonight. He tried to bring all this to show us that's where I'm going, that's where I'm pointing to. Number one, this is now for us to accept and realize that this our God is so merciful unto us. The reason why he's doing it that that none of us should lose what he has. That is one. That is if we have anything at all. I pray to God that indeed we have something. And then the second one, and that's where we're going to look at the two lessons and learn from there. The second one that, that we should be even, even if at all we don't have it, perhaps we should not lose what we seem to have. That's a remarkable difference, and we're going to see it. This The word of God is unbelievable. Why would Christ be using languages two things? Say, number one, be, so you don't lose what you have, and then it turns around this one said, you don't lose what you seem to have. We mm -hmm. come to it's, it's amazing, and it's only this this feeling that God is saying, Don't you see this? And going beyond that, you will see where this is going to take us. Now, there may be some of us here. This is everybody, please listen to me. There may be some of us here, I pray to God. I pray to God that all of us will be. But I actually have, maybe since these two weeks or three weeks, I pray to God, have perfected the fear of him, the foundation for the fear of him. My brothers and sisters, if that has not happened in your life, please, please do. We don't know what's going to happen. Look at even the testimony of Aki, even Olo. Anything, anything could happen anytime. It could happen to me. And God is coming. If I have not perfected, perfected. But if there are some of us who have perfected the fear of God, then that means that God is saying, if any one of us have perfected the fear of God, say, behold, Emmanuel is in you. And he's saying, take heed that you don't lose that. This is very, very crucial, my by people. Who is this Emmanuel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Who is this Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? The Bible told us in 2 Timothy 2.19, that is the only foundation. Mm. And what is this foundation? The Bible told us, saying what? Anybody? Depart from iniquities. Sister B, God bless you. No iniquity. Let me put it that way. Sister B said, depart from iniquity, that's what it is. But I'm saying here, no iniquity. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation that he's talking about. And if any one of us had that, this is the situation that is a mystery, that is unbelievable. The Bible tells us in what? Luke 17, 20, 21. Says, Behold, stop looking anywhere. This is where you start right now. This is where you start. You're talking about the temple of temples and holy of holies. Is here. You. The, the kingdom of God within is within you. Emmanuel is in you. And God is just saying, 
I, I can see why. Why? Those who have perfected the fear of God and God is in them. He said they have, can you please so to go back, John, John 5.24, please. John 5.24. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. He has passed from death into life. What is passing from death? He has, pa he has passed from hell. Yes. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We're just going to be like, so in other words, this is it. You want to, <laughs> that one is, one with God here. Let us, that's why he's talking about, that's the urgency. He's telling us this profession. Don't lose what you have already. If we have it, if we don't have it, maybe we seem to have it, we'll come to that. No wonder I say that there are some, there are some here. There are some, I'm speaking to you, and there are some here who will not even test what? Yeah. Yeah. They will not test death. We know that one he said. That's what we're saying. And some people, I know that it was a wonderful question. Somebody asked on that time. We just, wow, what, what is he talking about? There are some who will not test until they see the kingdom of God. They have already seen, right there. The kingdom of God is within them. That means they're seeing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is with them. And if they die right there without sin, they will make it into the kingdom. And that is what God wants all of us to be. Their state of readiness and speedily and willingly able to obey and follow whatever he wants us to do at any time. When one has put on Christ, Galatians 3, 3, 27, 3, when he has put on Christ, then he actually lives. And the glory of the Lord it takes over from there. So that's what he's saying. Yet, yet this is the situation. The cross of the admonishment is, that one may lose everybody. This is the cross. This is the cross of the admonition that we're supposed to have. One, somebody may lose what he has already because he told us one thing. He may lose what he has already. That treasure through any kind of disobedience will crush it. That is any sin. So, Christ is the solid foundation, we know. But the solid foundation supports the, the structure. That's what it was actually telling people in Colombia. This is the foundation. It supports the structure. But if obedience is going to be the structure, if the structure is not completed, then the person has labored in vain because both the structure and the foundation will come into ruin. Everybody, please let us make sure. And the fear, I want everybody to make note of this. The fear of that, my people, for all of us in this ministry, is that actually that which is lost may be irrecoverable. It may be. Would you, please, Sugoma, can you read Luke 14? 27 to 30. It may be. Take note of that and we will see it now. Why the example? I'm not saying it. You will see it. the scriptures. Luke chapter 14, 27 to 30. Yes. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation mm -hmm. and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. He was not able to finish. 
So God has come down to tell us, look, let not small, whatever we call small sin, okay? Simple things. Let it not stop us. Otherwise, that will ruin the foundation. God, Emmanuel will live. As long as we offend him, that is no point staying with us. Because God has told us he is light. In him there is no darkness. And he will not have any fellowship with any, any darkness. And darkness is sin. So that is something that right now with us, if God feels strongly that we can have this understanding, what he's telling us now, there's no other. And examples are bound. If you look at so many examples of what God is saying, and when someone loses that which he has, the scripture will show us here that it may be irrecoverable. You may not, what? You may not get it back because it will be given away. Can you please look at the unprofitable servant? We know what actually what actually happened there. It's unbelievable. So go back, can you read, please, Matthew 25. Matthew. Yes, from 24 to 30. Okay. Matthew 25, 24 to 30. Yes, ma'am. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, mm -hmm. I knew you to be a hard man. Yes. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him. And give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone that who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, mm -hmm. even what he has will be taken away. And then she don't matter 30. 30. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, brothers and sisters, why do you think Christ is telling us all these things? He's the one. He's the master speaking to us, telling us the way it's going to happen. That servant, he thought, oh, well, I know the master's rule. Whatever it is, you know, just like us. Ah, oh, I can, you know, I can get away with it or whatever it is. Oh, so you know my rule. You know all my rules. And yet you did not keep this one. And you knew I have spoken to you. You knew actually everything that I have told you. That if you break one, you have broken all. Don't. But you still went ahead and did it. You see? And it's not only, he didn't only stop there. He said, cast him into hell. Almost the same thing he told us in Matthew 7, 19. Any tree who does not produce good fruit I'm not only going to cut it down, I'm going to put it, burn it. It's going to go into hell. My brothers and sisters, this God is admonished and talking to us. And when Pastor Ivy was praying, was not talking about, please God, give all the spirit to really accept your chastisement, your correction. And this God is not playing with me. Yes. And he's not playing with any one of us. Because the same God told us, for example, that look, the children of Israel, if you look at Matthew 8, 11 to, so to God, you can do all that so that there are people who may want the scriptures. Matthew 8, 11. Eight, yes. 11 to 12, ma'am. To 12. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven. Mm -hmm. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out mm. into outer darkness. Mm. There will be weep and gnashing of teeth. This, this a word of our God. Anybody telling anybody any other thing? I mean, the Bible, Paul said it rightly. Let him be a cause. 
because people need to know the truth and the truth only. And we don't have to dwell even more examples. You know about uh, what? John 15, 1 to 2. I am the vine. You are the branch. Any branch in me does not produce, I will cut it off. It doesn't make a difference what the person thinks he is. And not only that, when the Bible was speaking to us, he told us to be careful about one thing. Otherwise, the time when we come, we will even repent in tears and God will not hear. Give me Hebrews 12, please. 12 to 17. Hebrews 12, 12 to 17. Yes, ma'am. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees mm. and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Yes. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, mm -hmm. lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one muscle of food mm -hmm. sold his birthright. Mm -hmm. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though, though he sought it diligently with tears. Mm. He found no place for repentance. And uh, when you see that, can anybody tell me Another striking example of one who found no place in repentance. Mm, even, though he's, even though he sought it diligently, tears. Esau. No, that's what Esau, Esau, he was telling us about Esau. I said, Esau. who is? Moses, Moses. 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 Hmm. Where do these people the generation of preachers of this world, the few good preachers and the prosperity preachers, where are they coming from? They can only come from the devil. Because how can you tell somebody, oh, yeah, well, once you're saved, you're not saved. Well, that may be true to the extent that you've never been saved at all. Because how can you lose what you don't, you don't have at all? One cannot say, oh, I'm going, to, even in the, this, this in our secular world, whatever it is, you don't go and say, well, I don't care. Once I do this one, I continue to do it. I'm good today, but you know one thing, I'm going to go and steal tomorrow. Oh, I can tell you one thing. You'll be arrested and you go to jail. So this is something God is throwing and showing us. And we don't have to really continue because for the purpose of, of this team, this group, I know there are people who may be new in this place. But many other scriptures you can see, when, when God warned us and warned us, you will lose what you have if you don't take time. And sin will make you to lose it. But he told us one thing that I want everybody to understand. <clears throat> that any time, any moment, you have something and that sin, that comes in, then that sin is capable, no matter whatever you think, whether small or big, of what? Making you sh come short of the glory of God. That is what everybody needs to understand. It will make someone come short of the glory of God. And also it is coming short of grace of God. So what are we talking about there? The Bible told us is through disobedience. So to go back, can you read Hebrews, please? 4, 1 to 2. Hebrews 4, 1 to 2. Yes, ma'am. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, mm -hmm. let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. So go back, so sorry, sorry, my sister, for interrupting you. Can you repeat that? Let us, let us fear. Go on. Let us, yeah. 
I should read that again, right? Yes, please. Okay. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Mm. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Let us fear lest any of you, any of you, myself, fear lest you come, seem to come short of it, of entering his rest, come on, the glory. And it tells us how. Can you read please verse 6 and 11? Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 6 or oh, verse 6 and 11. Yes, ma'am. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Because of disobedience, because of because of sin. Go ahead. Verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. So you see, what happened before will happen again. That's how God is. If the circumstances and facts are the same, it will be the same thing. That's how God operates. So now, without even going and reading so many other things that are there, we know about so many scriptures where it tells you if you look back, that you're not worthy. We have that Luke 9, 62. Those who want to see that. In Hebrews 6, 4 to 6, it tells you, look, as far as you're concerned, it is impossible for the person after knowing the truth. That's what actually I'm talking about when I say what? What we have. Yes. What we have is the truth. Once you receive that truth, that means truth is in you, living in you. If you turn away from it, that may be taken away, it may not be recovered. Now, why am I saying this? Tonight, it may be it. That's the message that God is talking about. Mm. Saying tonight, this moment, now, today, today, as you hear this, what is telling us now, and make us remember today, let it understand, because tomorrow may not be. And God will still be there and remain and be God and move on. But he has put on so much. And he told us that if anyone does otherwise, presumptuously, the person is now insulting the spirit of grace. And God will not forgive. Which means that the person will lose whatever the individual has. That one is in Hebrews 10. You look at 26 to what? 29. But 38, look at Hebrews 10, 38. Everybody knows it. And somebody may say, well, we'll go through all the scriptures. That's the scriptures we're going to go through. Whenever issue comes, we're not going to manufacture our own scripture in this place. <laughs> so it's the same thing. Go ahead, my sister. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Yes. The just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. If anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. That is it. Imagine God saying, my soul has no pleasure. That means the person has lost it. He, will not, he may not recover it. I'm using me. I'm trying to be nice. May not recover it. Then the second lesson. And I'm, the question I'm going to ask, where are we? But the second lesson is this. For one, to lose what he seems to have. What does that mean, my brothers and sisters? Yeah. The, the, remember this one or that one losing what he has mm -hmm. this one he will lose what he seems to have no, that means he didn't have it in the first place he didn't have it in the first place it's like Joanne, God bless you but let me put it this as number one he thought he had it he thought he had it he thought, oh, he had oh yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay he didn't have it in the first place but delusively mm -hmm. he, thought he, had it. he thought he had it and as we go on I'm, you know keep pondering in, 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 your, in your mind and said where did 
do you belong or where did you belong or where do we belong? Mm. The, that question is going to come because this is a reality that God wants all of us to really make it with him. Take us to that secret place where we can be as it is. Amen. One thing is this, when somebody delusively thinks he has something, when in reality, he does not even have the ownership. Another one of somebody who, what he seems to have, will be when somebody has partial ownership. But complacently, he thinks he, he has all. You see? So typical example is a parable. Can you believe how the scripture, I, I mean, this evening was like, I was just saying, Lord, you are awesome. That's not what I can say anymore. The scripture, when it comes, there is absolutely everything. The word of God comes, it's all in place. Whatever Christ said, he knew why he said it. And it's just for us to understand that. But let us look at the parable of the soil. When he told us that, you will see what it means by what one seems to have. Okay? Can you look at, please, Luke 8. So go my read from 10. Luke 8. Yes, look from 10 to 18. Luke 8, 10 to 18. Yes, ma'am. And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and yes. hearing they may not understand. Amen. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And mm -hmm. these have no root, mm -hmm. but believe for a while and in a time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among, among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, mm -hmm. and bring no fruit to maturity. Mm -hmm. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand, mm -hmm. and those who enter may see the light. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Therefore, take heed how you hear. Mm. For whoever has... To him, more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken from oh him. Oh, my goodness. Real, oh, my goodness. I mean, I think, thank God, this is sinking my in now. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how we can thank this God in what he's doing for all of us. He's the one teaching I cannot teach this. It's impossible. But let me ask you this. Let's start asking that. Because I'm sure you understood it. It's unbelievable. That's mm -hmm. why the scripture can never fail. Over there, he told you, whoever had, whoever had, the, I mean, what somebody has will be taken away from him. Mm -hmm. That's because the, the, profit, the unprofitable servant had it. He had it, but he lost it. Mm -hmm. But this one, let me ask you, let's start from there before we get to that. Verse 17. For nothing is secret that will not be revealed. What is secret that will not be revealed? Heart. The what? The heart. Oh, bless you, Pastor. The heart. Most of us think, oh, we're serving God. Ah, we are so loud, whatever. What is the intent and the thought? God is seeing the heart, what the person is reading. Let us make sure we understand what God is talking about. But let, let me put it this way. There are some seeds that fell 
in the street immediately. Which are the ones? Which are the ones that seen or they thought they had something? The ones that fell on turns. Ah, Mr. John, you are right, but you, you all all of them. All you, of them. All of the, all the three, all three, all three. <laughs> Those on the west side, they thought they had something, but they didn't have anything because the enemy immediately took it away. Mm. The other ones were on the rock, they but they, had... they don't have any foundation of eternal life. They didn't even depart from evil. They just thought they had anything. They didn't have it. The other ones thought they have gotten it, but they got mixed up with the things of this world. <laughs> and then the throne took, will took everything. And they don't have anything. Because they, they, especially those ones, they yeah. think, oh, we got it, we got it. But they don't know they have been choked. And that mm. is why we need to leave the things of this world, earthly things and plenty things alone. Pursue and lay hold on eternal life. It's what you've been going through and been suffering and why God has brought you to himself. That's why he's saying what one seems to have will be taken away from him. Because these people yeah. delusively, complacently, they believe they have something when they didn't have anything. Yeah. We'll come to question. Yeah. But do you understand one thing that is there? Mm. If you want to give any further, is that there are so many scriptures, my brothers and sisters. If you if you if you look at even Revelation three from fourteen to eighteen, remember the are you cold? Are you are you are you cold or hot? Which okay. one are you? Which one? I'm going to just take it out of my mouth because you think you have something, and then we just. For the purpose of the time, the time we have to move on. Look at the rich young man. Lord, what should I do to you? You should do this. You do this. Oh, I've done all those things since all my my youth. What else do you think I lack? I don't lack anything. Oh, we know what happened to him. So, go back. Can you read Matthew nineteen? Just on that twenty twenty one. But we know the story. Matthew chapter 19, verses 20 to 21. Yes. Okay. It's not updating me. Okay. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Hmm. <laughs> Jesus. <What>? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. <laughs> so what, what is, what is, this was asked in uh, uh, Bonaventura, and it was a long, long discussion. People could not understand what, I, what the Lord was explaining to them. When I asked him, I said, what did Christ ask the rich young man to do? They said, well, he asked him to go and sell everything. Well, I mean, anybody will say that has understand. But for you, who is given this spirit to understand his mysteries, yeah. you should know what he's telling him to do. Follow me. Obey me. Yes. And the man doesn't want to obey. That's sin. Leave, leave everything of the world behind. That is it. Yes. So the man thought he had everything, but he didn't have his, he didn't have everything. <laughs> and then and then this is what actually happened but this something I want us to take note of, this is a special note please, mm. because if this evening we could go to so many scriptures all over that God has given to us from Genesis if I go back all that you will see where God, what I'm talking about now, the same and we have to pay attention the special note is that losing what one seemed to have and losing what one has, which one is more, more, more dangerous, more evil? 
seem to have the one that you have. The one that you have is to go. Why? <laughs> because you already got it and enjoying it, then you lost it. That's 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 a good answer because you know the truth. Yes. When it's given to you, that is no more for you. No for excuse. a makers remember, there are no more excuses. Yes. Mm -hmm. No more sacrifice. Don't give me any other thing. You want to talk, tell me right now. It will not happen. Because this is one thing I want everybody for us to know. But to, for, for those who lose what they seem to have, but eventually, there are some of them, even the ones that the enemy came and took the word out of them. Even the ones mighty, that didn't really bear what? Root. And the ones that fell the rock, or whatever, they just had it and were choked. But eventually, only God knows. That's why he said, nothing is hidden that will not be revealed. That they were ignorant. Who knows? I, I, I don't know. It's only God. Remember the one who knows the truth. Wow. The one who knows the truth and turns away from the truth cannot actually avail himself of defense of ignorance anymore. Mm. It's not there anymore. That's why in Africa, God told, told me, which that time I, I, I cried and told people in Africa, and I told all of us that were in the mission at that point. I said, God, God told me, said, look, you know you have totally, oh, you have totally no more, you have denied yourself every defense. How am I going to defend against anything I've done now before God, my people? It's not possible. I'll be lying. And God knows the heart that I'll be lying. The mm -hmm. truth. That's why unto whom much is given, much is also expected from him. But for adventure, any of these people who seem to have what they have, they were acting in ignorance or they were being deceived by outside influence or whatever it is. Because to be honest with you, there are millions and millions of people who are in this category in churches. They are being deceived. They may not know. It is when they hear the undiluted truth and they still refuse and say, ah, well, I'm going to still be there. Whatever it is, I'm already there. I'm used to it. Well, God said, okay, you're used to it. Then stay there until you die. So that is a situation that we all need to understand. And you can see a typical example. We're going to move on. Where God was telling somebody, say, look, now you know the truth. That's what he told the adulterous woman. Go and see no more. Otherwise, something happened. But if you go back to Genesis, you see the same God saying the same thing, which he told us about what? The king, Abimelech. We know that we know we have used this before. Genesis 20, my sister. You read from, from 1 to 7. You see, the 7 is where I'm more, I'm more interested, but it's good to read it. Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 to 7. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shor and stayed in Jera. Now Abraham said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister. Mm -hmm. And Abimelech king of Jera sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, indeed you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken for she is a man's wife. Mm -hmm. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Did he, did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. And God said to him in a dream, yes. I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Wow. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. Amen. Amen. My people, this is a look at the difference there and dealing in dealing with how God is just telling us there. It summarizes it. 
when we know the truth, then it's a different ball game whatsoever. And then we go against it. He said, hey, you have, I warned you, you will not. The same thing that actually brought Solomon trouble. Solomon, God said, I, I even warned you, I, I warned Solomon two times and he did not listen. So now, let us look at this. Our case study tonight, a short case study. When we talk about where we are, and I'm, that question I will ask it, and where the churches of this world are these days, where do they belong? You know, somebody, I don't know if you have encountered this. Some people have asked me sometimes and said, well, can you, can you t tell us about revelation? The revelation is very difficult, it's complicated, we don't understand it, and so on. And I have even seen amazing things. We are some preachers, uh, big big board or whatever, using illustrations about all sorts of things that has to do with revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. And you want that. And I'm going to ask this question. Who best reveals Jesus Christ? Jesus. Jesus, Sister B, thank you. Jesus, everybody please understand the situation. Jesus Christ is the one who best revealed himself and what actually is in the revelation of Jesus Christ not different from what actually he revealed. I don't even know what people are talking about, but let me ask you this. What is actually the main focus, main audience of the book of Revelation? Who? The church. I'm calling the them to church. The church. <laughs> the church. God bless you. Anything, look at, let me tell you one thing. That's why I want to, I want to stop right now. We can, we can, that's where we, we are. We ask ourselves where we are. In the book of Revelation, the most important thing if you want to know the revelation of Jesus Christ is to read and understand and comprehend and accept chapters two and three. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, they let, the book was what? Written as admonishment unto the seven churches. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get a message of what God is talking about, don't, don't come and ask me, oh, what is that white horse? What is this? And that? Uh, the, what do they call it? The, the battle or whatever. Of Amag what do you Amag call it? Amag Amag what in the world is that? I don't, I don't want to hear, hear about any of those things. It's like telling me, oh, you know, there'll be a rapture. We're going to meet, meet in the air. I yeah. don't care where you want to meet. My own right. No, no, no. Honestly, my own right. Lord, please, please, Lord. No, please, Lord, make make me make me. I mean, Jesus, Jesus. Be, be be with me, right, Emmanuel? Please. Yes. At any second, whether I'm driving or I'm flying, I'm sleeping or whatever I eat. When you come, Lord. I am ready for you. Ready. That yes. is it. Why do we worry about, we use all this, uh, I don't even know whether it is a part of education or people manufacture trying to make things look difficult. The thing yes. about God is easy. It tells you, do what I tell you to do. Do not worry about the time. Do not worry about what I'm going to do, how it's going to happen. Worry about pleasing me. If you please me, behold, even right here where you sit, where you stand, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. So you look at these seven churches, and you see where, why you shouldn't really be so shocked with things happening in many, many churches in the whole world right now. Can you tell me, of all the seven churches, how many of them had, and how many of them seem to have? <laughs> <laughs> Only one had. Only one had. <laughs> now, God bless all of you. I think. I think in reality, you know, 
There were two that had. Okay, two. The two that there were two. You did two. not ask. But it wasn't everybody there that had it was some. <laughs> no, no, no. There were two that said they, they had. But yeah. look at this. Look at this. Out of seven, out of seven, mm -hmm. there were two that had. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, why is God, God doing this with us? Let us all wake up. Five seem to have. Mm -hmm. And some of them thought they were so rich in Christ. Mm. And he said, you think you are rich, but you are poor and wretched. And we're going to, because, because you know you answered it right, let us pick only one or two of them, and then we just, we just close, my brother and sister. Because if you look at this one, can you please read, please? Revelation 3. If you have time, read 2 and 3. That's where the message of the Revelation, that says you're going to find it. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. Yes, ma'am. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> wow. I can't. <laughs> I can't. So no, read, read, read 17 again. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. <laughs> I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Mm -hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We're going to take one more and then we'll just uh, end with that. He who has ear, an ear to hear. Let him mm. hear what I'm telling the churches. But the, the reason why we say that more it will be more tolerable those who seem to have ignorantly whatever it may be their situation be than the one who has and allows himself to lose it. Mm -hmm. If you look at the five five churches, what did Christ ask them to do? Repent. Repent. Thank you very much. As a child, I'm to repent. In other words, there was still there was still some hope. <coughs> you see, some of these ones they thought they were rich, but they didn't know they were miserable and so poor and blind. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing, even for the past two weeks, we'll be talking about even this this Tuesday with the Colombians. It was so touchy. I'm mm -hmm. talking about humility, mm -hmm. a humble heart. A broken and humble heart. What he's saying is this. That's why Pastor Charles captured it when he was writing. When we say that the person does not have earthly shame. Earthly mm -hmm. shame. Doesn't care about who is there. Because the humble heart is just like a blind people. Remember the, the two blind people that mm -hmm. came to Christ and said, Lord, you son of David, please have mercy. That's what it is. Have mercy. And people, and people shouted on them, shut up. They said, 
you don't care whatever you're talking about. Lord, the, in fact, the more they shout, yes, the, the more they cry. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy what? What they are saying, we are, they are acknowledging. What should I do? We are blind. Mm. Please help us open our blind eyes. Uh, <laughs> Spiritually blind. If, That's anyone, what we are. if anyone lacks that humility of crying unto God day and night, regardless of the place, the individual is too far away. He has not gotten the brokenness that God is talking about. And God may not listen. So these five churches all repent. They maybe if they will repent, he said, yes. That's why. But look at the church. What he told the church that had it. Revelation 3, please. 7 to 11. Says God, man. Look at 11. Mm -hmm. Revelation 3, 7 to 11. Yes, ma'am. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right. These things says he who is holy, he mm -hmm. who is true, he who has the key of David, yes. he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength and have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Because you have kept my command to persevere, mm -hmm. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Mm. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, mm. that no one may take your crown. Wow. Mm. Do, you, wow. Do, do, you, do you see now everything God has been speaking to us, everything comes back the same thing? Obedience. Number one, obedience. Mm. And it's not only that, because you have kept my, in fact, he told him that they have little what? Strength. Strength. Then why is he giving them more? Because they are faithful in the little mm -hmm. he has given them. They are faithful in the little they are given to them, and to whom who have, who have something more will be given. Given to them. And because they obeyed him, mm -hmm. the end. Then he's telling them, I will even, I will fight temptations. I will be there for you. Mm. Because now you are me, I am in you. The battle is mine. It's no longer yours. Mm. I will fight those battles. And I'll keep you all the way. Because he did not deny me. Mm. He didn't tell them to repent. Mm -hmm. Because when there is nothing to repent, you don't have to repent. But if you have something to repent and tell me that, oh, God, I mean, uh, he, he has already done it. This is Jesus Christ telling them to repent. And people still preach. You don't need to repent. Everything has been forgiven. And there are some people who still listen to them. But my last question is this, my people. Where do you think, or where do you suppose that we fall in? Or you fall in? <laughs> and then the, next, the second question is that, where do you suppose we ought to fall in? <laughs> no, the five and two. So, supposed to fall into the ones that have it. Yeah. That's where we ought to be, right? Yes. yes. But uh, the, the first question you omitted that one, the pastor has answered it anyway. Where are we? <laughs> five and two. We fall in the five, and we are supposed to be in the two. God bless, God bless all of you. We're supposed to be in the two. <laughs> My people, please. Please, nobody knows the next second. Yes. Let us reach out and let God take us to that secret place mm -hmm. where he can make us one with him. Heavenly Father, I give you praise and give you glory. I thank you, Lord, mighty God, for this overwhelming love, mercy, grace. Thank you for your spirit. Jesus. Thank you for preparing us even before your message or your 
their teaching came. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, no man can teach your word. Your spirit alone can reveal these mysteries and can break them in such a way that we can understand. We cannot, we don't know what to Lord mighty father give for this. We can't give anything. Mm -mm. That's why it says it's free. We can't charge for it. There's no charge, Lord. You're giving it to us. And we pray, Lord, as like, Father, that which you're giving to us, that you bring so many more people and give it to them. Use us, my God. Oh, Lord, wherever we have ever gone wrong, Heavenly Father, forgive all of us. We come, all of us, on our knees at this moment, at this time, and say, Lord, we will we really offended you. We sinned against you. We are here to say, Lord, please have mercy. Have mercy, Father. For your spirit that henceforth, my God, we will live for you and you alone. And that mighty God will be faithful in keeping all your words so that you will also be with us and fight all the battles for us. It is all about you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless your children, all of them here, and those who couldn't make it, Lord. And those who will hear this message the latter day, my Father, my God, who is in heaven. We thank you. thank you. Yes, we say it all the time, Lord. We don't understand why you're mindful. We say it's almost like we're taking it for granted. Father, it's so deep. Why are you mindful of us? We don't know. But, oh, Lord, I pray you, do not let us fail you. Do not let us fail you. Oh, Lord, sustain us. Keep all of us. Mighty Father who is renew, renew your spirit right now, Lord. Pour your spirit on all of us. Thank you, Lord. And that your name alone be glorified. Father, from everything you are showing to us that you do not want any of us to be lost. Oh my God, my Father, whatever it takes, let it be that none of us will ever be lost. Amen. Come and take on, come and take glory. Be exalted forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen.